This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. It's time to take the NFC. Also, Kirk Cousins is food, man. He is food. Lastly, I think this will be Bryce Huff breakout game, but let's get straight into it. All right, man, let's just hop straight into it. Eagles versus Falcons. Eagles should win this game. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you've been watching me for a long time, if you've been watching me since my old page, you guys know what I'm going to say. This is a must-win game. And I always have a valid reason why I believe this. You know these games are must-win games. First of all, I watched the 49ers lose. I watched the Lions lose. Um, I watched the Cowboys lose. Just the NFC East in general, you can get ahead. You could, you could definitely get ahead because the next two games, I think it's against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Saints. Those are your next two games. And if you can knock those dudes off, you can take control of the NFC East easily and you can take control of the NFC in general. So we got to win this game, man. We have to win this game. Falcons, I don't think they have enough offensive power to beat us. I really don't. I mean, Kirk Cousins, at one point he was the guy, but he ain't it. I mean, they got B. John. Okay, cool. That old line is, is kind of suspect to me. Hell, Kirk Cousins can't throw the ball over 20 freaking yards. Should I show you guys this graph again? He cannot throw the ball over 20 freaking yards. Like, yo, know, we, we got to beat him. And I, I got to see a pass rush, man. I have to see a pass rush. But. I'm going to play this all 22 that went rival like a couple weeks ago. And it was, or a week ago, I should say. It was Kirk Cousins. And it was just showing him throw the ball. And it looked like he he's scared, man. He looked scary in the pocket. You see this, all this? Like he looked scary in the pocket. There's no way you can tell, you can't tell me I pass rush can't get there. Bryce Huff can get there. Josh Sweat can get there. Jalen Carter could get there. Milton Williams can get there. So we had to take advantage of this statue, man. And he, trust me, Kirk Cousins had one of the fastest balls. But even if we don't get the sack, I got to see pressures, man. I have to see pressures. I got to see like, okay, our D-line got it. Our D-line definitely got it. And it was just that feel week one. Because week one, I mean, the, the rush wasn't there. We did other things to get past rush, like we had sent Zach Bond or we had sent the Kobe Dean or these corner blitzes. Like, we did schemes and techniques, which I like from Vic Fangio, especially if your pass rush not getting there. But we need that D-line to work. We definitely need them to get to work because Bryce Huff getting paid the big bucks. He getting paid the big bucks. And then you got Josh Sweat want to get paid the big bucks. And we know Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, and stuff like that. In the future, of course, they're going to want to get paid. Milton Williams is on the contract year. You got to get there, man. You have to get there because this dude is a complete a, a statue, man. And then the plus, he don't got the play action or the rollout because the way he's moving in that pocket, looking scary, we got to go get him. We got to go get him. And that's why I think it's going to be Bryce Huff big day. I think he's going to have a good game. And shout out to Nick Waters, a.k.a. Philly Film Room. I know a lot of you guys watch him. He break down film a lot. I even asked him, like, yo, let me use this video for my next video. And he gave me the permission. And I'm going to put a link to his video in the description. But let me play this clip. Oh, and this is the reason why I believe Bryce Huff is going to have a big game. But... Let me go ahead and let Nick Waters explain it. I, I don't want to forget that 
this Packers team last year was third lowest in pressure rate allowed. So this isn't as if this was a team that gives up a ton of pressures to begin with. And we talked about this in the game preview. The Packers offense is designed in a way to really make it hard to rush the passer with the amount of motion that they use, with the amount of play action that they use. And the play action that they use is full flow play action where they're running outside zone, play fake one way, and then they're rolling out their quarterback the opposite way. It's hard to get pressure on plays like that. Then you look at the fact that when they do drop back on their play action passing plays, a lot of times it's six and seven man pressures where they're keeping a tight end or a running back into block. You're getting multiple double teams. It's hard to get pass rush pressures in those situations as well. And then when the Packers go to their drop back passing game, it's a lot of quick game. It's a lot of screen games. It's a lot of RPO games. So it's tough to get pressure on the Packers. Combining that with the, with, with the field conditions, I wouldn't take too much away from the lack of defensive line pressures in, in week one. I know a lot of people you know, were, were saying Bryce Huff had a dud of a game, and I would agree he didn't really do a whole lot. He had zero pressures. I, I'm not concerned from what I saw. When you look at some of the context, he had, first of all, he had 14 pass rushes. Seven of those pass rushes were over two and a half seconds. So anything under two and a half seconds considered quick game, it's gonna be hard to get pressure on quarterbacks in under two and a half seconds. A lot of times, you have to be unblocked to get pressure on those plays. So of his 14 pass rushes, which is a very low number in general, seven of them were over two and a half seconds. Huff only faced four real pass rushes where the ball was not out quick, where he wasn't either chipped, slipped, or had a design rollout in the opposite direction. So really four true pass rush attempts. I can't take away anything from that and say, oh, well, this guy's a dud because he didn't have a pressure or a sack. I will say this, he still showed great burst. His 0.73 second get off average was by far the best on the team. Jalen Carter was second on the team at 0.92 seconds. When you look at the tackles he was going against, he showed off a good pass rush repertoire. He was making life difficult for the offensive tackles and the opportunities that he did get to, to rush against those guys. So yes, did he not win on Friday? No, but I am not concerned about this guy getting pressure on quarterbacks. So. You see, like, was there some disappointing moments? Sure. But he still had one of the fastest get-offs. And then the plus, when he was in there on pass rush, you know, downs, the, the ball was getting thrown fast or it was some type of rollout. So Bryce Huff, was he unfairly judged? Possibly. Possibly he was unfairly judged. But, look, he, he can prove himself this game. He can prove himself, and I think, this is the game he goes off. If he give me a sack, I think he, he could give me a sack or two. And I get it. A lot of people talking about Hassan Reddick. We should get him back. But let's be honest, man. It always took Hassan Reddick to like week five, week six to get it going. Yeah, he'd get that 10, 12, whatever sacks he get. But it took him like six weeks to get it going. We got to get Bryce up the benefit of the doubt. He would get it going. He would get it rolling. But I get it, it's Philadelphia, and he will always be compared to Hassan Reddit because we always look at Bryce Huff now. Like, he's the guy we chose over Hassan Reddit. Let's see what he can do. And week one, it, it was somewhat of a disappointment. We even said that, I think, the first preseason game and then the second preseason game against the Patriots, he went berserk, Bryce Huff. So, we just got to give it time, man, and then judge him on that week one field. I don't think it's cool. I don't think it's cool at all. You got to give him time to to just gel. This is something new. I mean, at one point, he was a backup rotational guy who got a lot of sacks, who had 10, well, 10 sacks to be exact, I believe, with the Jets, and we we taking that gamble, and I, I, trust, I trust Bryce Huff. He would get it right. But the fans, man, the fans, we got to give them time. We got to let him cook. Let him cook, man. But I can't emphasize more how big this game is, though. Back to that topic. I just can't emphasize more. Again, this is one of your easier opponents coming up. I, I get it. The NFL, you just never know. But based on what I've seen the first two weeks, this is one of your easier opponents. Because Buccaneers, I mean... It looks sloppy to me against the Lions, but they still beat a contending team, and that defense looked legit. And the Saints, they beat the Carolina Panthers. They blew them out, 
But come on, the Carolina Panthers are just bad. But then they followed that up and blew out the Cowboys, who we all thought were semi-contenders. I seen the flaw in them. But we thought they were semi-contenders, and they look dangerous. So we, again, we have an opportunity to knock these dudes off. And if we can knock off the Saints, because it seemed like the Saints is going to be in that top four seed. And if we had a tiebreaker with them, that'd be good. And then if the Buccaneers are the top dogs in the NFC South, we could have a tiebreaker with them. Or, yeah, we got a tiebreaker with them and beat them. So we got to handle our food. But first, you got to get through Atlanta. You have to get through Atlanta without A.J. Brown. You just have to do it, man. This is a very important game, man. Very important. And that's why I think the Eagles win. Well, I would say 30 to 17 Eagles. 30 to 17. I just don't see how Atlanta scored more than 17 with a quarterback who's basically a shell of himself. I just don't see it. And if we could stop the run, yeah, we can we can do some damage. Saquon should go off. Devontae Smith should go off. That's why you signed Jahad Dawson for this reason. This should be a win. An easy win at that. Yes, I'm talking that talk without AJ. An easy win at that. But this is Eagle Al, man. I'm out.